So there were three pretty big headlines uh, out this week around what's going on in the AI world that we just wanted to touch on real quick. Um, so to touch on the first one, then I'll, I'll let Evan touch on uh, some of these other two. Uh, Chat GPT has surpassed 100 million users, which sets a record uh, for the fastest company to get to that, that number of users. Happened in two months after their launch, 100 million users, which is just absolutely insane. And then kind of along with that, they've announced uh, Chat GPT Plus, which is going to be uh, a paid tier of Chat GPT. Um, I believe that's going to be $20 a month. Um, so we won't dive into those too much just because the headlines kind of give the story. Uh, but Evan, talk about these other two headlines yeah. that we're following as well. So Google uh, has had to address uh, Chat GPT because it is a threat to their underlying business. Uh, whenever you ask something of Chat GPT, you get a direct answer. Uh, Google makes all their money on giving you a bunch of answers and a bunch of results and then layering in ads. Um, so in a world where that's no longer a thing, Google is under threat. Um, so Google has now responded by investing in a company that was started by ex OpenAI employees, actually. Um, so they're one, investing, but two, they're now coming out and saying, hey, we've got similar technology we plan on releasing. Um, so that all happened within the last several days. Um, you know, they, they had no choice. All their investors, their shareholders, putting a lot of pressure on them. Um, Chat GPT is... You know, as Logan just said, it's the fastest growing technology of all time. Um, this was pretty obvious when I first tried it, like it was going to be. Uh, I think, you know, I think when we saw after five days, it got a million users. Um, That's crazy. You know, it's 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 going to change a lot of things about how we interact with technology. So, again, Google addresses this and then same with Microsoft. Uh, Microsoft uh, made a huge investment, uh, more than $10 million in the last several years. $10 billion, right? $10 billion uh, into chat, GPT. Uh, they're rolling it out across all of their services, but perhaps the most interesting, most exciting is connecting chat GPT to the internet via Bing. And so that'll be able to give people, you know, live real-time answers about, you know, live information. Um, when that'll you connect information, crazy. structured data, uh, that's all over the internet via Bing to chat GPT, it's going to change it drastically. So that's probably the most exciting thing I'm looking forward to is how Microsoft plans to leverage this. And Microsoft's in a different position. I mean, they're, they lost to Google. They don't have the same pressure as Google to uh, disrupt their ad model. Um, they don't really have as much of their revenue that comes from Bing. So it's you know possible for them to totally revamp what Bing looks like, whereas with Google, it's, it's really not. Um, so this will be pretty interesting. Yeah, and the headline here is that Microsoft has announced that that version of Bing is going to be coming in the coming weeks. And I even saw kind of a supplementary story to that that said some Bing users actually saw what appeared to be the interface for uh, this this merging of Bing and ChatGPT. So I think that'll be probably one of the most significant stories to cover around artificial intelligence is when we connect it to the internet. I think that'll be pretty, pretty insane. Um, all right, so let's go on to giving our tip of the week for AI Edge, uh, how you can gain an AI Edge. This week's tip is uh, Evan's idea. So Evan, I'll let you describe it, and then I'm going to share my screen, and we'll kind of walk through it as you talk about it. Yeah, so um, I've been using it in this fashion. Uh, whenever you have like a project or something you're working on uh, and you want another perspective or you just want some ideas on how to get started, uh, just type it into chat GPT. Um, so type in, uh, give me the first steps I should take to create a pitch deck for my boss. Um, you could type in anything. I, I used it personally for my company. Um, I typed in, give me an incentive plan for a developer to complete a project by a given date. Uh, and it gave me a complete rundown of how to incentivize a developer and its own perspective on how to do it. Um, and I used some of its tips. Um, so as you can see here, you ask it a question about a task or a project you have to do, um, ask it how it would do it. Um, you don't necessarily have to take all the advice, but this is actually uh, borderline a perfect answer. Um, so this is probably uh, a very, you know, if you ask a professional who's been in, you know, probably corporate America for a very long time, that's giving reports to their boss, uh, how to do it, uh, it probably wouldn't be far off from this. Um, this is pretty, pretty dang good. Yeah. And just to supplement this in with the tips that we gave last week, which was just around how to communicate with ChatGPT effectively and getting more specific, asking it to elaborate. If I'm the one using this and let's say I don't understand exactly how I should go about doing one of these steps. So let's just say, for example, um, 
I want to talk about like gathering and organizing the con the content. I can just say, be more specific about gathering and organizing the content. And what it'll do is it'll just start diving in deeper into that specific part. So see, now it's just going to dive directly into that step. So you could theoretically just go through each step and say, hey, elaborate on this, be more specific about this. And it's going to actually go in and give you, you know, answer by answer on that exact one. So you can really go down a rabbit hole with chat TVT. Uh, you know, what you shouldn't do is just like ask a question and then just take on the surface level what it gives you. you supplement your own intelligence into it, um, ask questions of it, and then let it give you more relevant responses. So that is our AI tip of the yeah. week. You have anything to add to that? I would just say treat it like a dialogue. You know, you you asked it to do something here. It didn't give a perfect answer this time. You might have been a little too broad. Yeah. Um, so keep the dialogue um, and also understand that it has memory. Um, so, you know, you ask it a question and you're specific on the first one. The next one, you can say something like it. You can refer to the last question as it. Um, it has memory. It knows what you've asked mm -hmm. in the past. I mean, it knows what you just asked as a previous question. Um, so literally just have a dialogue with it. And again, treat it like you're asking a friend for another perspective. Um, so if you are really stressed out about a project, you might want to go to a friend and say, hey, help me reduce my stress. What would you do if you had this project? Think about it in that term. Uh, this is something that is an assistant. It's another person to give you perspective. Uh, and this is the internet's perspective. It's literally gathering information from across the internet. So um, it could be better than anybody you have in your in your network to ask this question. Um, so let's see, what would you put here? You leaving the tech world, tell a story about you leaving the tech world to join the circus. <laughs> Did you really? <laughs> wow. And then felt unfulfilled and yearned for something more. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to go play with the monkeys and elephants, man.